Hello, welcome back to the channel. I uh, hope you've already watched my video on my Heltec V3 node. If you haven't already done so, go back and watch that video first before you watch this one. Now what I've done is I've designed a little bracket to go on the back of the light um, because I realised that the sun wasn't quite hitting the panel in the right uh, place to optimize the charging so i designed this this bracket system here which i'm going to leave a link for in the description if you want to download this to add to your solar projects or hang a speaker or do something useful with in your house um, to uh, to help me actually angle the panel into the direct line of the sunlight to optimize the charging because as others have said the uh the Heltec v3 is quite a thirsty beast and i need to improve the charging situation right i put this up on saturday morning it's now tuesday night and it has gone flat um it's done really well it charged on a couple of the days but i think it's just a little bit too much for this panel on the top so i think there's a couple of options we could loop stick another one next to it and just loop the cable over from the battery or we could put a separate solar panel in but part of this video was just to show you how you can do it with one of the, just one of these lights now the other option would be to fit a, wire, a rack module which is a much lower power consumption module in there which would do it um, but I'm just just for fun I'm going to fit my little bracket to this so we'll take it down and we'll have a look at what state the batteries are in right I can also report it's nice and dry in there um, we've got it's come back on charge a little bit today it's gone back up to 3.6 volts um, but I don't think the node come back on so maybe it just didn't quite get over the threshold to restart the unit but at the end of the day if it trips on low voltage cut out it's not going to work anyway so um, I don't really want it restarting we need to get either more uh, well we definitely need more solar capacity or we need to change this board for something lower power consumption. Now I know people have said that in the comments. Um, this was never a, this is what you're gonna do, this is what's gonna work. This was an experiment. This is why I started to do it for a bit of fun. I'm just giving the unit a charge. That's the nice thing about the units here. If you charge them off a USB, it will charge these batteries as well. So that's good. So we're, uh, we're charging the batteries and we're on as well. And this is for those people that said I put it up on the piss. This, this fence is on the piss. <laughs> Let me just show you. There you go. It wasn't me. I should have angled, I got, I got the light straight. I should have angled it to match the, uh, the post, shouldn't I? There you go. There we go. There it is on the, on the fence. And there's the, uh, the bracket down the side there. It's roughly angled at the right position now. Let's just pop this, the panel on the top of it. There we go. Let's take a relative reading. Like I say, it is only relative. If you've not got one of these panels, you could always make a tap in and come in off of this solar panel yourself. Just put a plug in the side. I'm just doing this just for fun. And you could use, use this on other panels as well and other things that are sort of sealed and you can't get into. I'm just turning it now as we speak. Let's lower down. We'll put it up. I can there, it's about right, that's about peak. There we go, I didn't need much adjustment to get it spot on. Like I say, the position of the sun changes, so that was just me being a bit pedantic and just having a bit of fun. You don't obviously need to do that. You'll, you can get it roughly there or thereabouts uh, just by eyeballing it really, to be honest. So yeah, so let's switch the unit on. And then we'll see, I'll do an update video as to how long this lasts. Um, be interesting. Right, according to this, we've got 4.04 uh, volts on the battery. So we'll see exactly what it does over the next few days. Right, this is future me now. Um, well, I, I run that for a, a few more days and it did give me about an extra day's yield on the panels, um, but I need more. Um, so I thought I'd look into ways of conserving the power on these boards. Now what I've found is you can get little modules that switch the power on and off to your microcontroller. Now Adafruit sell a module using a TP5110 device. The problem with that is it needs a reset signal to come from the microcontroller and I can't see where there's such a signal 
uh, coming from the Haltech that I can use. They may well, they may well be, but I couldn't see it. And um, so what I thought I would do is, because I want to put this thing to sleep for a couple of hours, because you don't need the node running 24 seven, I certainly don't for what I'm doing here. I can literally half the power consumption and still get a useful node out of it. And for other people that have got like data applications, they might only need the data to go at a certain time anyway. The trouble with the, TP the TP5110 solution, it's only got a maximum of two hours, but if you use something like one of these, which is an RD Arduino Mini Pro, they consume very little current, four milliamps on, on when they're powered up, so absolutely nothing. They will control the load via a little MOSFET, which I'm going to fit, and um, it sh it'll then allow me to set whatever times I want. I can have it come on and off on different times of the day, because I can put a real time clock um, battery in with this as well, really cheaply. These are cheap. I, you can get these for like four pounds. Uh, they haven't got a USB port on them, so you do need an FTDI uh, or some other similar USB to TTL convert converter to actually program them. Uh, and that's fine, you can do that. So what I've done is, I've written a little very simple, uh, basically blink, it's like the blink sketch, couldn't be more simple to come on and off on different times, which will then run it for two hours, switch it off for two hours, run it for two hours, which at 100 milliamps consumption for the Haltech should make a big difference, but this will still function uh, as an effective node for me for, mo for the most part. And um, yeah, so I thought this was another way we could eke some more power out of it. So what I've done is, I'll cut the next shot, you'll see how it's installed in the light unit you'll see the little FET. The little FET is a SOT23 uh, device, so absolutely tiny, but it's um, a logic level FET, so it will come on. These are 3.3 volt microcontrollers, so if you do use a 3.3 volt microcontroller, you need a logic level FET for it to switch fully on to switch the load. So I just thought I'd mention that. Those onboard things you get that are used for switching uh, 10 amp loads won't work. So I'll put a schematic, up on, a schematic up on the screen now to show you what I've done and then you can take that and use that if you want to do it yourself. Like I say, and the sketch is basically just the blink sketch with longer time period, that's it. Right, so next step, you'll see me on this bench with the light before it goes on the on the fence. Right, we've rebalanced the cells. We've got our little FET connected up there. It's all working now. We, uh, we've got a little pull-up resistor there on the on the input to it and on the, on the, sorry, the output to the FET and we should be good to go. So this is going to save us quite a bit of uh, energy, but still, we're still going to be left with a, a functional node. So let's get the batteries in here. Let's pop the case back on and get it popped outside. Right, we're getting some good sunshine now on the unit. It's been running now in place for four days and it's still running. The battery level has dropped down to about 3.8 volts, but when it gets a sunny day like this and it's off, it does charge really well. One of the things I was going to mention was that little peg is just the screw. So you can adjust the bracket to where you want, just pop that, the screw through, and then it just makes it easier to pull the screw out. So you can set that in any position. Honestly, this will hold a hell of a lot of weight. I reckon you could probably sling 50 pounds on that, maybe more, and it would still be there. Um, so yeah, it looks to be working really, really well. We've got it at just the right angle, I think. And um, I reckon this should work. I reckon this will be enough for it to do it, um, short of me getting a, a lower power module in there. And so yeah, bring on the sunshine. If you have been watching, thanks ever so much. Like I say, this isn't a be all and end all. It's just me playing around, having fun with bits I've got in the drawer without spending too much money and having a bit of fun doing it. So if you have been, I hope you've been enjoying it. And I hope that you, if you're not already uh, subscribed, if you kindly do that, it makes a big difference to the channel. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good weekend.